In this video, we're going to take a look at what the time zoom measurement on a camera is and why comparing the zooms of different cameras can actually be a bit pointless. You've probably seen them written on cameras, you know, like most commonly compacts and bridge cameras. A time zoom figure such as 5 times, 10 times, could even be 50 times zoom. Now, people rather understandably presume that that figure refers to how zoomed in a view you're going to get from your camera and that a camera that has a, a higher zoom number must therefore be able to get you closer to subjects that are far away. I used to think exactly the same thing when I first started in photography. However, this isn't quite what the zoom figure is referring to. The zoom figure isn't standard across all cameras, such as two cameras that both have a 10 times zoom won't necessarily produce the same results. The zoom figure on a camera is actually a ratio of the lens's shortest focal length versus its longest focal length. I.e., if a lens is 24mm on the short end and 240 on the long end, then its longest focal length is... 10 times more than the shortest. So that camera has a 10 times optical zoom. If the longest focal length was increased up to 480 millimeters, then it would be a 20 times optical zoom. Incidentally, they state optical zoom for if the zooming is being done purely by the lens itself, whereas digital zoom is just when the camera is cropping into an image, but that reduces the image quality. And if the camera is quoting hybrid zoom, then it's adding the optical and digital zooms together. Now, why is comparing zoom ratios for cameras a bit pointless, you might ask? Well, as we've just established, the zoom ratios are specific to each camera and aren't a universal measurement. For example, if we were to have two hypothetical cameras, both cameras have a shortest focal length of 24mm. Camera A has a longest focal length of 240 whereas camera B has a longest of 480 so in that instance, camera A has a 10 times optical zoom, camera B has a 20 times, and camera B is able to get much closer to subjects that are far away. Now, let's introduce camera C, which also has a longest focal length of 240 millimeters like camera A. However, its shortest focal length is only 12 millimeters, meaning it too has a 20 times optical zoom like camera B, but it isn't able to get as close to those far away subjects although it can see a much wider vista on the short end than either A or B. The point being, you might be considering a camera for wanting to photograph faraway subjects such as wildlife, and you might see the 20 times zoom for cameras B and C and think, great, I'll take camera C, not realizing that in fact camera B can actually get you much closer. Likewise, you might be more interested in landscape or architecture or something that, that usually needs a, a wider field of view. And you see the three cameras and you choose B thinking, well, it's got the same zoom range as C, when in reality, C will actually give you a much wider view. Or you could see a hypothetical camera with, say, a four time zoom and think, well, that's going to be rubbish for wildlife. But the focal range of that could be 500 mil up to 2000 or it could be six millimeters to 24 and have a view that's so wide you could almost see yourself standing behind the camera taking the picture. Basically, don't read too much into the zoom figure when you're comparing cameras because they aren't always relatable. It's far safer to look at the effective focal lengths of the cameras and then decide if the short end or the long end is more or less of a priority for you. And I realize I've just opened up the can of worms of what is effective focal length. That's an in-depth topic for another day. But the short of it is that cameras can carry different size sensors. And the same physical focal length can create different views depending on the sensor size. So, unlike zoom ratios that aren't really comparable to each other, effective focal length is used as a standardized way to compare and represent how wide a field of view you will see from your camera. I.e., 24mm effective focal length will give you the same field of view whether it's on a phone or on a 35mm full frame sensor. On many compact and bridge cameras you'll actually find that they advertise both the physical and effective focal lengths. The physical is pretty much always written on the front face of the lens barrel and sometimes on the top as well, whereas the effective is normally found on the side of the barrel. And it's the effective that you want to use when comparing cameras 
because that will tell you, you know, what the furthest and what the widest zooms are. Well, hopefully that's helped clear things up for some people. If you have any questions or queries, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. While you're down there, if you enjoyed the video or you found it helpful and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.